Welcome to True Crime Wine Wednesday. I am Sherilyn Dale and I am so glad you found me. Today we are talking about the murder of Bart and Krista Halderson. They were loving parents, kind friends, and they went missing after going up north to tend to an emergency at their cabin. Days after being reported missing, their partial remains were found in two separate locations. And the events that led to the discovery exposed mountains of lies and snapchat actually ended up providing one of the biggest clues to solving this case before we get started if you could make sure that you are subscribed and notified to my channel i would appreciate it more than you know i have a new video for you every single wednesday and sometimes even on a friday all right we're gonna get started before we do I have a quick message for you I want to give a huge thank you to our sponsor today, Dipsy. You guys know I love the questions that Dipsy asks to check in with yourself. So here's today's question, okay? Let's take a moment and check in with ourselves. How would you rate your relationship with yourself lately? Maybe you're feeling like you're in a stage in your life right now where you are feeling nice and confident and sexy and you're just ready to go and explore your innermost desires. Or maybe you are needing a little boost and some stimulation in the self-love area. That's okay. Dipsy's sexy audio stories are here to help. If you've never heard of Dipsy before, it is an app full of short, sexy audio stories designed by women for women. They really bring you into what you're listening to. Their stories come to life with their immersive soundscapes, realistic characters, and tons of different scenarios. You can discover stories about second chance romance, vacation flings, all the way to hot and heavy hookups. They also have new content being released every single week. So in between listening to your favorite stories over and over and over again, you can be adding new ones to that roster. They also have soothing sleep stories, wellness sessions, and if you like to read instead, you can also read your sexy stories. Let Dipsy be your go-to place to explore your fantasies, spice up your me time, relax, unwind, or heat things up with your partner. For my supporters, Dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial. All you have to do is go to dipsystories.com slash Sherilyn. That's 30 days of full access for free when you go to dipsystories.com slash Sherilyn. Once again, that is dipsystories.com slash Sherilyn. All right, get settled, and while you do that, here's this week's riddle. Jared's father has three sons, Snap, Crackle, and... Okay, today we are heading to Madison, Wisconsin, specifically the home of the Halderson family. The owners, Bart and Krista Halderson, are described as very kind and generous people, even willing to help strangers without a second thought. They're also parents to two boys, Mitchell and Chandler, who they were devoted to. They were really proud of their boys and they were headed in wonderful paths in their life. Mitchell had a good job in IT and Chandler was interning at an insurance company while he was also attending Madison College for Tech. Chandler was also about to embark on a really exciting time in his life and everybody was pumped for him. He had just landed a job at SpaceX that he was expected to start soon. Now Bart is described as more of the structured dad. He was successful in his career at an accounting firm and he definitely wanted his children to do the best in their life. Krista is described as the soft and nurturing mom. She would think of everybody around her in her life during any type of holiday or celebration, whether it was their birthday, and just doing something, going out of her way to make them feel loved and special. I mean, she still did Easter baskets for her boys and their girlfriends, which was so, so cute. She had actually sent this photo of the boys and their girlfriends with their most recent Easter projects and sent it off to her cousin with a little note that said, Happy Easter. Yes, the boys and their women. Mitchell is still at Epic Systems and will be 25 this year. Yikes. Chandler is currently interning with American Family Insurance as an IT administrator, but his other degree, sustainability management, has given him an edge. Just a proud mama and someone who often kept in touch with those in her life. So when she just didn't show up to work on Friday, July 2nd, her friend and co-worker who worked with her at an auto body shop instantly knew that something was wrong. 
He was so worried that after work, he and his girlfriend actually drove to the Haldersons. When they got there, they saw that their cars were there, but as they were peeking through the windows, they didn't see anything inside. They stuck around the property for a little bit, looking around, seeing if there's any clues. As they're looking around the property, the youngest Halderson child, Chandler, comes out and he lets them know that his parents had gone up to their cabin, which was located in Langlade County. He said that they had left with some friends of theirs as well as some pipe repairing supplies so he assumed that they were going to fix something that needed tending to up there and the plan was that they were going to be back in a couple days. This area was about three hours away from where the Haldersons lived and the reception there was not that great so Chris's friend was like oh, okay well that probably makes sense maybe she had forgot to call before she left and then has been trying to call since she's been up there but you know now at least we know where she is. This also happened to be the 4th of July weekend so everybody is kind of preoccupied with their own thing. The weekend came and left, but Krista did not return to work on Monday or Tuesday. And when she didn't show up on Wednesday, that same friend now knew that that initial feeling that he had of something not being right was accurate, especially because Krista had a, a very important doctor's appointment that she had been looking forward to. And that was taking place on that Wednesday and she didn't go to it. He contacts Chandler again and Chandler says that he did speak to his mom while she was out there and that was on the Sunday and she had mentioned to him through text that they were heading up to a lake nearby and he was starting to get concerned now that it was Wednesday but he was just trying to talk himself out of his mind wandering and going back to them just being in poor reception and maybe a change of plans had happened where they wanted to extend this long weekend a little bit longer. They decided the best thing to to do though was to file a missing persons report in case something had happened out there. Chandler goes in, uh, he speaks with the police. He says that he was with his family on that Wednesday prior to him seeing them last. He said that that day they didn't talk much so he didn't know too much about the plan because earlier on in the day his dad was home from work and Chandler was playing ball in the house with their dog and he had broken this glass on the fireplace. His dad was upset about it. Why are you throwing balls in the house like this is what happens so they kind of did their own thing throughout the day and Chandler just knew his dad's temperament that if he's done something to upset him best thing to do is just kind of do their own thing keep distance and then he just quickly gets over it so that's what they did the next day he said he woke up with the dogs at about 6 a.m he spent a bit of time with his mom while she was getting organized for work. She left at 7.30 that morning and his dad was working at home that day. And when he worked at home, they usually had breakfast together, watched one of their favorite shows, which was either like a replay of Wheel of Fortune or Family Feud. That day they watched Family Feud. His dad did his work during the day. Chandler kind of just wasted the day away by gaming, he said. And then just before his mom came home, he started cooking shrimp scampi for them for dinner. He said as they were having dinner, that's when they lightly mentioned that they were going to be going up to the cabin the following morning. And his dad had made reference to him needing to make a mental reminder to bring his pipe repair tools. But that was pretty much the extent of that conversation. After that, they all watched some TV together and then they went to bed around midnight. By the time Chandler woke up in the morning, his parents were already gone. He did mention to the police that he thought it was odd that they had set aside some folding chairs to bring with them and they were still there, but he just assumed that they left them behind because they didn't fit in the vehicle. During the weekend, he said that he had gone about doing his thing. He had tried to get a hold of his parents a couple times, but he did know that the reception was terrible. And he did receive a text from his mom on Sunday that was mentioning that they were going to White Lake. Based on that last communication, a search team was sent out to that area in fear that something had maybe happened to them on the lake. That search came up with nothing. They also went to the cabin hoping maybe, you know, they're just still there having some lunch, chilling, and they just didn't have reception. Even the dishes all the way up to the cabin were searched just in case there was a car crash that nobody had seen or reported. I mean, so many scenarios are running through the family's heads. Even people are, are worried that maybe they were kidnapped and they're being held hostage somewhere because this area is very isolated. Chandler had even mentioned that they told him they were going with friends, but he didn't know who these friends were. He hadn't met them before. So this adds another layer of 
mystery to this case. Things became even more concerning when this search team went and searched the surrounding area around the cabin. They busted open the cabin. No one was there and it looked like no one had been there since the last season. Outside the brush and the grass was really long. It was, you know, dusty. You could tell no one had been there recently and the boat out in the shed also didn't look like it had been touched. So now the concern came to be well, why would Krista mention this trip to the lake when the boat is still there and they haven't even been at the cabin and it's Sunday? Now, Chandler had recently been uh, in an accident where he, I believe, had fallen down some stairs. He had a concussion. He was wearing a neck brace for a while. There had been some substantial nerve damage done where he was having issues with his legs. So his brother had gone out with investigators to show them the area and Chandler had stayed back at his house, but he was still searching the ground in his neighborhood, trying to see if any of the neighbor's ring cams or surveillance system had picked up any Anything the day that they left. My name is Chandler Halderson. I live just down the road. Oh, yeah. You're the one who follows the police. Yeah. I was told you the fancy security system. I was wondering if you were able to capture the road or my house. Um, the, I, the police actually came and, and downloaded everything they have. But it, it's actually my sister's house. Oh, okay. Yeah, so they were here. I think till like nine o'clock last night and downloaded all the video she's got. So we're hoping that- Yeah, did it capture anything on- We don't know. We don't know. They just took a copy of everything and it's so we're hoping- Sliding the lens. Yeah, and it's all- be able to get a copy. Yeah, and it's all HD and then I think there's one- um, Especially in the dark. It looks like it has a little bit of night vision. Yeah, and there's one on the, uh, the corner of the garage too. Um, I don't know if that one quite goes that direction, but... Maybe see this road and take different Yeah, so hopefully, I mean, they, we gave them everything that we had, so we're, we're hoping they find something on it. And fortunately, there was no footage that provided any leads and it kind of felt like for the investigators, this is like a needle in a haystack with so many geographical factors here. Did I just make up a word? As the media is picking up this story, looking for public assistance, they get a call from a close friend of Chandler's long-term girlfriend, a girl named Kat. And they let the investigators know that Chandler and Kat were out at their property over the 4th of July weekend. They didn't say that there were any red flags or anything like that while he was out there. They mostly just hung out and swam in the pool. Chandler had mentioned that he hadn't spoken to his parents though and he was a little bit worried. He was trying not to let his mind wander though and think of, you know, worst case scenarios. And they were also just trying to reassure him that everything was probably fine. So there wasn't any red flags while he and Kat were there, but they did think that it was odd that the next day they saw Chandler near the property and he was alone. Now this stood out because they had like a, a farm this on this rural area. It's not like he was neighbors with them and just driving around and they were always crossing paths. So you had to make an effort to go out there and he didn't really have a reason as to why he was there. So the detectives call him in and want him to formally go through those events with them again. All right, um, so we're just gonna talk to you a little bit more, okay? Um, so yesterday, uh, July 7th, I came to your house um, where you live with your parents, Bart and Krista um, Helderson. And um, the reason I was there is, is you had gone to the Windsor Police Department and reported them missing, right? Yes. Okay. Um, I would then go to the department and I went to their like, office break room mm -hmm. area. In the same building? Yeah, yeah, I think it's been extended with the city hall. Okay. But nonetheless, a deputy yeah. came and, yes. and spoke to you. Okay. Um, so you, you reported your parents missing. We got some information from you yesterday. Um, we've been following leads last night, um, working today to, you know, go through different things, um, just trying to locate them, right? Um, so I, I guess if you want to start with, let's just go back to, to last Wednesday. Um, Wednesday. I was with my dad. We, what time Wednesday? I remember it. It was kind of a bad day. Okay. 
Well, why was it a bad day? Um, well, my mom had work, so she was gone. Um, my dad and I were watching something over lunch. It was uh, the Wheel of Fortune, and we have we normally have the couch like with our back facing her. The table we sat at at the end of you coming. <laughs> Downstairs or upstairs? Downstairs. Okay. In that room with the TV. I tossed the ball and I smashed the glass. Okay. With the dog. The dog. So uh, that, yeah, set my dad off and we tried to clean it up. Okay. I don't know about him, but I got injured. Um, but he was mad. He didn't really talk to me too much that day. Uh, my mom got home at five, I believe. I, that's her normal, 5.20 to 5.30. What time does she work, do you know? 7.30 is when she leaves. I don't know her hours, but I don't know when she leaves. Okay. It's 7.30. And then all the way up till five, and she, she comes home 5.20, 5.30. Did she come home about 5, 20, 5, 30 that day? I believe so, yeah. By the way, a detective at my house said something's happened, and while we were leaving, people were going inside. Is there a warrant for my house? Should there be? No, I'm just wondering if... Okay. Can we um, go in? As far as I know, they were at your house, and they were going to be there talking to you to ask if you would come up here and talk yeah, to us. Yeah, but um, Officer Haley just like walked pretty much in to the gate, you know, the gate on the outside. Mm -hmm. She's kind of walked in, I was, I was wondering. If was that more. when you were getting your wallet? Uh, no, we were, we were, um, I was in the car waiting to leave. I was just wondering if everything's okay, because okay. she said something's happened. Okay. And we need to go down. Yeah, I don't know if I know what that's about. Well, has anything bad happened? Oh, not sure. Right, so so Wednesday night, mom comes home. Um, dad was angry. Was was he yelling or what was? How, how would you describe dad being angry? I you guys, I have to show you this one part of the interview where he is discussing a movie that he and Kat had watched one evening over the weekend. Spoiler: It has nothing to do with the case, but I was triggered. Um, we watched this movie, Pretty in Pink or something. It's about a girl that likes fashion and goes to Harvard. How do you confuse Pretty in Pink and Legally Blonde Chandler? I'm taking the dog, dumbass. So while he's being interviewed and this tip had come through, there is a search team out at this uh, family friend's farm while they're talking to Chandler. And during the search of the field, they made a gruesome discovery. Underneath some sticks and debris, they came across the torso of a man. Close by, there were also some suspicious tools one would possibly use to do this. And there was also a rifle hidden in the barn on this property that did not belong to the family friend and owner. So the search team on scene notify the interviewing detectives and they semi confront him. They tell him, we suspect that you know more than what you're telling us and we need to figure out what happened. I think it's time we start talking about what happened to your parents. Like a truthful version. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we have like 20 pages of writing. We're gonna start with a clean white piece of paper for you to start telling the truth. Okay. Why? Because listen, listen to me. This is the only chance you're gonna have to tell us the truth. Okay. Okay. What we, listen, listen. I'm, I can't tell you what we know, but we know you're not telling us the truth. We know your parents are no longer with us. Okay, and we know the reason why. Okay, you need to tell the truth. There's... Listen, listen. You need to tell the truth about what happened and just tell us why it happened. Okay? If something happened, if you were defending yourself or if you just uh, got fed up with stuff, you need to tell us the truth. Okay? This is your chance to tell us why. Okay? I'm not BSing you. Okay? So can we do that? Okay. They're okay. Um, what, what was that? 
Okay. What happened? Okay. Can, look, you know what happened. We're not going to tell you what happened. You know what happened. You were there when it happened. We're not BSing you, okay? When it happened, can I? We know more I, than you think we know. I understand. But there's people that have told us things. We have, we have evidence. We have proof that more has happened. Okay. So your parents never made it to the cabin. I think you know that. I just have a few minutes to stand up and spin it over here for me. He immediately shuts down the interview, asks for a lawyer, which doesn't mean you're guilty. We here all over the place don't talk unless you talk to a lawyer first. He's not able to leave the station though that day. He is charged. He's charged with lying to investigators and hindering an investigation. And even though Chandler's interview had ended, they were still hoping that they were going to be able to get some answers. Because while he was being interviewed by his set of detectives, his girlfriend Kat was also being interviewed in a room next door. They were basically running through the same series of questions with Kat, trying to piece when she was with Chandler, what they did, when she wasn't, what he was saying he was doing. And as they're going through the timelines of the last few days, she mentions she can get clearer timestamps essentially because she and Chandler share their locations with each other on Snapchat. Now, although she and Chandler were in a long-term relationship, Chandler's friends said he was popular with the ladies and known to stray from Kat and have a wandering eye from time to time. This is something that she suspected and had accused him of in the past. He had denied it, but in order for her to trust him and move forward, one of the stipulations was having their location shared with each other on Snapchat. Do you manually enter your location or is it just through your... Whenever you open Snapchat, it has your location. Okay. Yeah, unless you turn it off. Okay. And so be for us to take your cell phone and analyze it. We're trying to verify some things that so you have all the timestamps saying, yeah. right? So, I mean, you have all the pictures. So we have a guy that could download it while you're here. Like you wouldn't have to leave it with us. He can limit what he mm. looks at. I'm not going to lie. So we, have... don't, we don't have, we don't care about those. Okay. We don't. All we care about is the text messages from you, Chandler, Snapchat history, any social media stuff. And we're really just looking for probably, what did you say, the first until? The first until? Today. July 1st until today? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Locations and what she said. But yeah, if there's any like inappropriate photos, I like, totally don't care about those. Nope. No, we're not going to. We don't even want to look at it. They've been sent through text and snap. Uh, I don't want to look at it, so. I don't think I'm going to look at it. He's going to just, so the way that he can do it, he'll just do it from a certain parameter. So July 1st or 2nd until today. First. Totally go just from that. Everything else, we don't go through all of your stuff. It's just a very specific time. And the only reason that we're doing it is just to make sure that we have all the timestamps, right? So you say that you and Chandler are together at this time and you have the proof to back it up. That's really what we need it for. Can I get a pinky, pr you can't break pinky promises, but it's only gonna be from July 1st. So yes. You, yeah. Okay. That's what you want. I would like a pinky on that. I can pinky you. <laughs> awesome. Do you have an email? What's your email? Oh, your birthday? No. What's your birthday? Complete side note, when I was watching this interview, first of all, I find her so adorably quirky. But when they asked to search her phone and she was like, oh, I don't know if you want to do that right now. I've got some photos on there. It was like, I think people's fear if they have inappropriate photos on their phone is that you, they'll lose their phone or something or somebody will like get a hold of it or they accidentally post a photo they're not supposed to. I don't think anybody ever thinks that they are going to be in a situation where the police need to pull all of the footage from their phone and they're like, oh, so about the phone. 
poor girl. Several times through her interview, she had asked if there was any updates on Chandler's, uh, how he was doing, if he was still talking. And you could tell towards the end of her interview, the other detectives were feeding her detectives some information and it was coming out that they were suspicious of Chandler. And so they even asked Kat if she thought he could have anything to do with this. And she truly didn't think that he was capable. He's the only one I have a relationship with. Like, I'm not, you know, Caitlin. I'm not, I can't answer questions about Mitch. Right. But it's still like, because like, the shock I will feel. And like, I, I think I would just be so mentally fucked up if like, I found out he did that. Like, it just seems not Chandler at all. Yeah. sweaty day who's the what's the Chandler like that you know hmm? what is Chandler like the the person Chandler is to you what is he like it's while she's waiting for her phone to come back to her from all the retrieval that she finds out Chandler is not going to be leaving with her and that he's actually been arrested any why. reason why it's probably worried you guys are gonna be like Chandler did it okay you know I think that's everyone's fear yeah. Like, no one wants to be accused of killing their parents. I'm also, I think, just a very understanding person. I will you know, look for the best in everything. Okay. But, you yeah. know. Um, well, right now, because he's not being so cooperative or forthcoming, his parents are missing. It looks like they're going to take him into custody. Are you serious? Mm hmm I don't know what the charges are yet, but um, right now it's just going to be because of the missing person's investigation and him lying lying to the detectives uh why he's lying i mean i you know we're all wondering um can i you probably know him best why do you why do you think he's not being truthful doesn't want to pin on him i guess can i talk to him before he goes or no mm -mm. i think they've already walked him down i <laughs> Did you ask why? Or, sorry, I just... No, no good. pin it on him. Do you think... Do you think he could have had anything to do with this? And if he did, do you think there's any help in him to disappearance? Did anybody help him? Could anybody have helped him? Hmm. Okay. So we were just trying to find out where his parents are. And, I mean, the sad thing is when you have someone that lives in the house with them and they're lying and not cooperating... What is yeah. he lying about? I, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Just that he's Because we, we were in with you. So yeah. we have other detectives that were talking to him. That's great. I mean, you've been super cooperative and trying to get your phone back. If it's not going to be done anytime soon... I can't imagine what a whirlwind this would have felt like. Granted, at this point, the torso that was found had not been identified. And I truly think that because of that, Kat wouldn't even allow herself to go there and think that somebody that she loved and cared for could be capable of this and that there was a another explanation that would make more sense. Days later, though, the medical examiners did confirm that the torso belonged to Bart Halderson. Now having confirmation that it was Bart and him being found in the location that Chandler was at officially shot him up the suspect list. But even that had everybody battling with the acceptance, especially Kat, because it didn't make sense. Like why? Chandler is described as more sensitive of the two brothers and takes a little bit to open up. When he does, his friends say that he's like a goofy prankster. At the time of his parents' disappearance, he was living at home with them and Kat said that they were always doing things together. They were always together, whether it was cooking dinner together or playing video games like Mario Kart. She had mentioned that they did like root beer float nights. It just didn't make sense until investigators kept digging into his life and they found out that Chandler was lying about some pretty huge things. One being that he was enrolled in Madison College, which he was not. And this seemed to be something that his parents were already um, suspicious of. They had asked Chandler to see his transcripts. Investigators found transcripts that they later found out were 
doctored. And they also found out that he had been creating multiple different email addresses to correspond with and, and communicate with his parents with to seem like they were different employees at the college. Even with this proof though, detectives found out that obviously Bart couldn't shake his suspicion because they actually found out that he had placed a call to the college and he was posing as Chandler, asking about his credits for the classes that he was taking. And the admissions employee on the other line is like, I'm not seeing you anywhere here. Like you, you're not enrolled in any programs. As Bart dug deeper, he found out that not only was he not enrolled in college, but he also did not have an internship at this insurance job that he said that he had, nor was he expected to start at SpaceX anytime soon. Yeah, Elon didn't have him on payroll, didn't know who he was. Based on text message conversations, Bart had hinted that he knew the gig was up and he had arranged for him and Chandler to go to the college and speak with the admissions office on July 1st. That morning, he sent a text to Chandler that said, I'm ready whenever you are. And that was the last text that Bart sent. It is believed that sometime that morning, Chandler shot his father so that they didn't have to go to this interview and find out that he was lying to them, to everybody. It's believed that he then waited for his mom to come home from work and did the same to her. There was a substantial amount of luminal reaction um, in an area in the basement and there was also a shell casing found. So the speculation is that he possibly could have called them down to that area and then done that. It's hard to know because even investigators said that when they had first gone to speak with Chandler at the house, the, the house was immaculate. It was pristine. Now with the confirmation of DNA that the torso belonged to Bart and the eyewitness placing Chandler at the scene where he was discovered, Chandler's charges were increased on July 15th to first degree murder for his father's death. But Krista, she was still missing. The suspicion was that she was no longer alive, but again, they were kind of faced with this needle in a haystack scenario because she wasn't found anywhere on the property that Bart was and Chandler was not cooperating with investigators and was pleading his innocence in his father's death. Thankfully though, Kat was still willing to talk. She went in for a second interview and this time she came with her lawyer. Again, this turned out to be massive for the investigators because when they had asked if there was anything that she had thought about since the last time they spoke, she said she had thought of something that might be helpful to them. Um, when, because I, I have been keeping up with the media, I haven't been watching any of the trials for my own mental health. Mm -hmm. And he was catching me up and like, when the Wisconsin River was mentioned, mm -hmm. I, like, we were mulling over it. I was. And um, I recalled like taking a screenshot of him near the Wisconsin River because we share Snapchat locations with each other. Mm -hmm. And he, like, wasn't responding to me, wasn't responding to me, and he always snaps me. Mm -hmm. And um, so I just have it putting him there at July 3rd at, like, in the morning. Okay. Because um, I was at home. Mm -hmm. And I know you have pictures from that, like, those days mm -hmm. from when I gave my phone. But mm -hmm. I just told him about it, and he's like, well, they'll take anything. That was, and that was my suggestion. As she said, she's, I've told her to stay away from media, not talk to anybody about, basically she has no life. I've told her from the last time she saw Krista and Bart mm -hmm. till he was arrested. Mm -hmm. okay. There's just nothing anybody needs to know that I'm aware of. And so she was mulling it as I was explaining. Mm -hmm. And she's like, oh, my gosh, and pulled this up and showed me. Mm -hmm. right. She's got a GPS on the phone. Mm -hmm. It's from Snapchat. I don't know if you use that, but. Um, that's him by the Wisconsin River off of Golf Road. Okay. And that's 8.58 okay. in the morning. Sure. And then my phone always tells me what day it is. It's uh -huh. July 3rd, 8.58 a.m. Okay. And it placed in there four minutes before, so 54. Okay. Have you been to that spot? Um, Do you know? I don't know if it's that specific spot, but we used to swim on the Wisconsin River. Okay. And, um, like, it's one of the spots we would just go to. Mm -hmm. And... Like, I've only been there, like, maybe three times, okay. but he's gone swimming there a couple times. Okay. Um, 
this screenshot ended up being the most important screenshot Kat probably had ever or will ever take in her life. And that's just wild to think. She's saying that from her checking on Chandler, seeing where he was at, and just something in her being like, I am going to need you know, proof of this location, whether her intention was to ask him about it later or whatever it was, she made that decision. There was something in her to just be like, "Hmm, this is questionable. So investigators went to search the area where Chandler's little emoji guy was showing up on the Snapchat coordinates. It wasn't easy. They had to search for hours and hours. It was quite a dense area. Eventually though, they did come across someone's legs and DNA confirmed that they were Krista's. How freaking horrifying. I just like I've been researching this case for quite a while and I just I I can't make it make sense. Now he already went to trial. He went to trial in January 2022 and the prosecutors said that they believed his motive was preventing his parents from confronting him about soon finding out about all of these lies that he had been telling everybody. Kat's evidence ended up being huge and I really felt for her when she was testifying. You can tell that she loved his parents so much and this was something that really broke her, especially when she realized that she even unknowingly had provided some of his cleanup supplies that he used to clean the scene of the house. He had texted her asking her to bring certain things over because he had cut his foot on the glass that was around the fireplace. The fireplace also ended up being very important to the case. When investigators had gone and asked the neighbors for surveillance footage, when Chandler had done the same things, a lot of the neighbors were able to hand all of that stuff over to the investigators. And although they didn't see any friends, like Chandler said, coming and picking Bart and Krista up, there was one neighbor who captured a fire burning in the fireplace of the Halderson home for hours from July 1st to 2nd. And forensic experts found over 200 bone fragments in the fireplace. That gun that was also found in the barn on the property of Kat's family friend, it was tied back to Chandler. Chandler had met a friend over gaming and they had become really close and he was a collector of guns. And after him and Chandler having a conversation where Chandler was mentioning that he really wanted one, he had decided to gift this one that he had in his collection to him. And this happened to happen just prior to the murders. Happened to happen. Surveillance footage had also picked up Chandler at a nearby store picking up a tarp that resembled one that was found near the scene where Bart was found. It only took the jurors two hours to convince Chandler of first degree murder in the murder of his parents and all other charges that were against him. And the only time that he spoke was at his sentencing. And he took the opportunity to say that he would be appealing the decision of the court and that he was given poor advice not to show any emotion during the trial, but that he did have feelings. And he asked that if there were any lawyers watching to please reach out to him. Your Honor. I want to take this opportunity to state my intent to appeal my convictions. If there are any lawyers listening and willing to take on my appeal, take a moment to please reach out to me. It's not that I do not have feelings. It's that I was warned to not show them due to the scrutiny of this case. Thank you. He was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Allegedly, he does have a new lawyer now, but there hasn't been an appeal filed to date. I mean, bro, just stop. You know, like the, the evidence is it's pretty strong. Your lies catch up to you as you know, like don't keep them going, you know, just just stop, just stop. That's just my opinion though. And I'm all around, this is just so senseless. Absolutely did not have to happen based on the accounts of everybody who personally knew Bart and Krista. They were such loving parents. Obviously, they were going to 
probably be pretty disappointed in him. But as a parent myself, I'm sure they would be like, okay, not cool. What the heck is going on with you that you thought you had to go to this degree? How can we help get you out of this web of lies that you've tangled yourself in and support you to get back on track? You know, it's just, it's so heartbreaking. And then you think about his brother who's now virtually lost like his whole entire family. For what? Because you lied? Ugh, what a piss off. It's just so wrong. All right, that's it for me today, you guys. If you haven't already, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It means the world to me. I love and I appreciate you so much. The answer to today's read all, quick reminder, Jared's father has three sons, Snap, Crackle, and, and the answer is Pop. Just kidding. It's Jared. <laughs> I freaking love that one. Snap, Crackle, and Jared. Oh, God. Oh, good times. All right, I'll see you in the next video. I'll miss you terribly. Until then, make sure to love each other, love yourself, and I will see you soon. Bye.